Just because lying in the sun unprotected is a big no-no doesn't mean we all still can't achieve that beautiful sun-kissed glow. I'm Jackie Carter, and I'm here to answer all of your beauty questions as well as give you some fun and simple beauty tips. Do you want your friends to think you just returned from an amazing exotic vacation when the fact of the matter is you never left the house? I'm here to tell you how to do that, and it's all about self-tanners. Self-tanners are an amazing replacement for the sun because they're not harmful to the skin. You don't have to waste countless hours out there trying to achieve a tan. It's a healthy alternative, and by today's standard, it's a must. Now, when it comes to self-tanners, I have made every mistake in the book. I have come out streaky looking, I've come out way too dark, and I have been as orange as a carrot because it's really easy to screw this up. So I'm gonna share with you a few tips so you can look beautiful and believable when you use self-tanner. The first step is to always make sure you prepare your skin. And people who don't prepare their skin, boy, do they live to regret it. I would recommend you start your preparation the night before. If you need to shave, that would be when you shave. You, but the most important thing you need to do is exfoliate your body from head to toe. You can use a body exfoliator, you can use a loofah scrub, or even a rough textured washcloth. But you really wanna make sure that you're exfoliating every inch of your body that you plan on putting self-tanner on, especially your elbows, your knees, and your ankles. These areas are critical because the skin there is a little bit thicker and it's usually a bit rougher in texture. And when you apply self-tanner there, even if you put the same exact amount on your elbow as your arm, it's gonna register a lot darker on your elbow. So make sure you give those areas a little extra attention. If you don't have time to prepare the night before and you plan on showering and exfoliating and going straight to the self-tanner, you need to make sure that when you get out of the shower, you completely dry your skin. If your skin is even a little bit moist, it could result in streaking, and that's something we just don't want to have happen. When you apply self-tanner, it's super important not to get too overzealous with the process, you know? You have to focus on just one area at a time, and the best method is to start at the top and work your way down. So if we were starting with our arm, we would gently, in a circular motion, paying fine attention to what we're doing because if we miss spots or it gets streaky, we're not gonna be happy with the look. Gently massage all the way down the arm and once you get to your wrists and then lightly cover your hands. It's a good practice to wash your hands. Trust me, I'm telling you firsthand, wash your hands after you complete a section because you will never believe how orange the palms of your hair, hands can look if you don't wash them. When it comes to your elbow, if you're concerned about them coming out a little too dark, you can put a little bit of body lotion on there to help dilute the product or just gently press the area with a towel or a washcloth to maybe remove a little bit of the excess product. The one thing that's critical, if you've never used self-tanner, you wanna start out slowly. Don't go for the darkest brown tan, right? Look for something that builds gradually or that results in a lighter shade than you're ultimately gonna go for because you don't wanna end up darker. If you start out lighter, we can fix that. When you get darker, the problem is a little more complicated to fix. When you start at your legs, another good thing to remember, again, same as the arm, start at the top, circular motion, work all the way down, a little gentler around the knees and a little gentler around the ankles. Very, very important. And only lightly coat the tops of your feet the same way you would lightly coat the tops of your hands. You don't want suntan soles of your feet. It's never a good look. After you've applied yourself tanner, it's really important that you wait before you get dressed. Actually, when it comes to self-tanning overall, you really don't wanna rush this process. You wanna have a lot of time on hand to make sure that you do it right and you don't compromise the overall result. So once you're done with the application, wait. If you can wait 10 minutes, that's great. But if you can wait 20 or 30, that's even better. And when you do get dressed, make sure that you wear loosely fitting clothing, nothing too tight, because it will alter the end result of the product. And you also want to avoid, you know, getting wet or even sweating for at least two hours after you apply your self-tanner, because you don't want streaks and we certainly don't want splotches. 
when it comes to your choices of self-tanner, there are many, many forms. There are self-tanners that have a tint to them, so when you apply them to the skin, you can actually see where your coverage begins and ends. And then there's other forms that come in creams and even gels where you have to be a little more attentive to where you're putting the product. And one of the latest revelations in self-tanner is the spray form. Spray form sounds easy, but trust me, you have to be careful. You just can't be spraying everywhere. You have to do it section by section the same way you would any other self-tanning lotion. Now, normally about now, I would ask you to tell me some of your self-tanning tips, and I am interested in that. But what I'm really interested in, because I don't want to feel so bad, is I would love to hear any of your personal self-tanning mishaps. Have you ever come out looking orange, streaked, or way too dark? I want to hear it in the comments section below. For more beauty advice, check out discovergoodbeauty.com where you can find all kinds of beauty tips. And remember everyone, let's live life beautifully.